Good morning, everybody. This is Roy Bandari with TalkCondo.com, and today we're very fortunate to be joined by Brian Brown, the principal of Lifetime Developments. Uh, Brian, you've been a great supporter of Talk Condo since really when we began, and uh, we're really excited to work on any project that Lifetime brings to the market, but especially this one, uh, Panda Condominium. So thank you for your time today. Uh, I know during launch time, it's difficult to find any time. So it's, it's exciting really time. It's, yeah, it's, for sure. It's a good time. So. For sure. So uh, we've got a lot to cover today. Sure. Um, I want to chat a little bit about yourself and, and Lifetime Developments. Uh, we're going to move on and talk about this site specifically at Young and Dundas. And then we, we, I want to learn a bit more about Panda Condominium. So okay. Lifetime Developments. Family company that's turned into that's this, right. you know, one of the top develop, development companies in, in Toronto. Uh, so talk to us a little about the company and, and sure. where, how it started and where it, where it got to today. So Lifetime's been around for over 30 years. Uh, it started off in the low-rise business. It's a family business, as you mentioned. Uh, two families are the Herzog family and the Pearl family. Um, I'm fortunate to represent the Herzog family. Um, my father-in-law uh, was one of the original principals. Uh, Mel Pearl is the other principal. And uh, unfortunately, my father-in-law passed away last May, uh, and he's left me some with, uh, with some big shoes to fill. For sure, for sure. Um, but uh, but uh, you know the the plan is definitely to live up to his expectations. Excellent. Um, Lifetime started 30 years ago, as I mentioned. We started in the low-rise business about 15 years ago. We uh, recognized the shift from uh, low-rise to a very strong market in the downtown core for high-rise. And uh, since then, we've had the uh, privilege of working on projects such as Water Park City, which was our first high-rise development project, um, Index, Karma, The Bond. Uh, we were involved Bisha. in We're, we're the, sat in Bisha right now. And Bisha is our, our very own hotel brand that we uh, launched this year. It's the first hotel brand to launch in Toronto since uh, the Four Seasons was launched in the 1960s. Um, we also built the Four Seasons in Yorkville. Uh, so we've had the privilege of, of a number of very strong, very exciting projects in Toronto. Panda being the sure. latest one that we're very excited about. Um, and w what a lot of people don't realize is that um, when we get to market, there's already four or five years worth of work that's oh, yeah. already in place. So you know, to get to, to this stage and to be able to launch the project, it's a, it's a milestone event for us and it's an exciting time. Well, you guys have been very busy on the construction side, right? Like uh, in the last few years, I said you've been one of our early supporters, and, and right. I say that because, you know, one of the very first projects that we we were involved in was uh, was the Karma, the Bond, the Bisha, um, back in 2011, that sort of time frame. And um, I, I don't know if you know this, and we do a lot of research on this stuff, but um, one of the reasons our clients continue to invest with Lifetime is they make a lot of money when they buy with Lifetime. Um, we looked at some of the numbers and. You look at some of the core neighborhoods in Toronto, we look at Yorkville and we look at the entertainment district and we look at College Park and, and what we found in each of these neighborhoods was uh, in Yorkville, a lifetime built development is ranked number one in terms of uh, the per square foot price that they command on the resale side with the, with the four seasons and they, they just recorded a sale at over $1,800 a square foot. Jump down to College Park, um, Karma is the number one ranked uh, condominium in that neighborhood and, and you, you're not competing against overnight builders it's big builders it's right. very very um, look at entertainment district and this one's actually my favorite uh, little statistic uh, in in the entertainment district which is sort of uh, John and Wellington to sort of Richmond and Peter area that square right you're ranked number one with Bisha and number two with Bond and this is a neighborhood with a lot of great buildings but um, something that Lifetime do is resonating not just on the investor side when the pre-construction comes to market, but also on the resale side when real people are living and renting and buying these prices. So, you know, there's something there that you guys are doing. I'd love to pick your brain on why you think... Like, it, well, what, it's nice to hear those statistics. I, I wasn't actually aware of that, but it's, it's, it's certainly uh, it's, it's great to hear because it shows that we're doing something right. Um, we pay a lot of attention not just to acquiring great sites, AAA yeah. sites, um, we, we look at a tremendous amount of sites before we, we actually um, choose to, to purchase a site. So we spend a lot of time trying to get that side right. For sure. But even once we do that, you know, we spend a considerable, considerable amount of time with the city, um, with the designers, with the architect, trying to, to understand the neighborhood where we're going to build, 
and not just what we're going to build, but how that building is going to affect the neighborhood itself. For sure. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of back end work that that happens. And we often find that the, the projects that do really well have a really firm understanding of who's going to be living in this building five years from now. It's not about who's going to be buying it today. It's who's going to be living in from and there's a, in, to match that up with the building that you're building is is so so important. I mean. You guys put so much attention into like the lobby designs. Like your lobbies are phenomenal. Every single one you walk into, uh, they're incredible. The amenity package. Like there's something about you that um, about lifetime that is a little bit more urban than some some of the other developers, and maybe you know the, the, that's got a lot to do with it as well. Well, the lobby to us is is probably the most important feature of a building because you know if I, we're selling units in a building, sure, um, and you know you could be in a building with. 100 units, you could be in a building with 500 units. But for each of those people that buy one of those units, when their friends or family walk in the front door, that's the first expression they're gonna, or first experience that they're gonna have. So for us, you know, getting that right, making it welcoming and timeless and classic is very important. For sure. The, the other side of it is the amenity and the amenity package that we try to put together. And we try to do something different with every building. And it also, it really depends on the the market that we're in, the neighborhood that we're in, who we think is going to actually live in the building. Yeah. And a little bit of that is forecasting because, right. you know, the neighborhood changes over a five year period. But, you know, in the case of Panda, uh, we're we're introducing a sport court to the outdoor oh, nice. amenity space. And so this the sport court can be used for soccer, can be used for tennis, can oh, be used nice. for basketball, can be used for volleyball. It's really multifunctional, multi-purpose uh, 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 sport court. And I haven't seen too many condos, if any, actually integrate that into the amenity package. So we're, we're always looking for something different. Nice. I've actually got a, a little story that I remember. And this was four or five years ago, right after we sold out Index. Um, uh, Lifetime held an event at one of the swanky downtown hotels, one of the five-star hotels. And I walk in and I get into an elevator and it's you, uh, a couple of the other management. There was Brendan Frankfurt and uh, uh, Mel Pearl in the elevator. We end up in the elevator together. And we're doing the hellos, thank you, congratulations. And Mel's just in the world on his own. He's like looking at this, <laughs> he's looking at this elevator, like pushing the elevator, and he's like, this is the so-and-so elevator from so-and-so company. And he looks at you and he says, we should have nicer elevators in Bisha. And you know, I, I got the sense that this is not the first time this kind of conversation's happened. It's always about looking at these details and finding where you can be better. It, where, it's what, definitely what the small details. We, you know, there's always room for improvement, and we're always looking to see what everybody else is doing, and and making sure that we stay at the the top end of the market. You know, you can't awesome. you can't just sit back and assume that I can I can use the same floor plan or I can use the same amenity package in the next building, and for it to to resonate the same way. Times change, people's tastes sure. change. I think the, you know the easiest way I sort of take it to the extremes. You wouldn't put necessarily the Four Seasons in Liberty Village, and that's not to knock Liberty Village, but it, it's a mismatch of product and location so it's about marrying those two together so that's awesome I, I love that like, like I said lifetime one of our favorite builders to work with and, and we will continue to do that so I want to shift gears and talk about panda okay um, <laughs> I, honestly uh, like we get asked what do you know about panda at least once a week for the last two years so if I'm getting asked about it yeah I know I know you a lot of phone calls at the <laughs> office and have been for years um, you know for a while it was when is it coming out yeah um, the, well, let's just back site, it up a little bit. It was, it's an important site, right? Sure. It used to be the world's biggest bookstore. Um, it, it was purchased uh, on Edward Street, right at Young and Dunda. So what was it about the site? that? Uh, the location. So, yeah. um, you know, a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for, for that property. They remember the world's biggest bookstore. They remember going there. Um, uh, there's, there's a number of websites that talk about people's experiences there. Yeah. We didn't want to ignore that, but at the same time, the site was definitely underutilized. It was it was it was a two-story um, warehouse type building, and didn't fit with the downtown core sure. anymore. But when you look at its location, um, there were a couple of key things that came to mind. So, uh, number one, uh, it's located uh, steps away from Young Dundas Square. Yeah, Young Dundas Square is the highest uh, pedestrian tourist intersection of the city. Um, at the end of Edward Street is Ryerson University. Yeah. Um, directly across the street is the TTC and Path Connection. So it, it, its location pretty much sells itself. For sure. 
Um, but it's also in, it's close to the financial core. Uh, so a lot of people, while we say that, you know, I think that there's going to be a lot of uh, students renting in this building, at the same time, we think that there's this other market of people that want to live in the downtown core, want to work or are working in the financial sure. core. And proximity and location and access are very important. Well, we always say this sort of the trifecta of tenants or end users that we're, we're trying to attract. And number one is um, anybody to do with the school. So Ryerson, U of T. Number two is the financial district. And the third one is also the hospital district. Right. Like that's a... You know, you, you stepped to five of the best hospitals in Canada, like North America. Like there's some incredible, right. like sick kids. You'd look at sick kids. It's, you know, one of the top uh, on the planet. Forget North America, but and you you, you know, within, you can jump to there. It, it's so close. So you, you you sort of attract all of those demographics, and it's, you say it's the center of Toronto, but, you know, I, I don't know about you, but, we've never sold anything at Young and Dundas because, projects never come up. Right. Um, so it's a really it's a exciting. rarity. It's it, a very it rare, very rare. Is, yeah. yeah. So it's connecting Eaton Centre and the schools and the financial district. Centreite is you know it's an understatement I think. So really excited about that. Um, I want to talk about Panda itself. Okay. I knew that question was coming. <laughs> so why why Panda? Like where where's the name come from? Like, we got a. So the 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 genesis of that name actually came from the architecture. Okay. Uh, what we have is a, is a large property on a block. It takes up almost half of the block. Um, so it was, a, it was a large footprint. And in designing the building, what we wanted to do was make the building look like two buildings that are okay, interconnected. Yeah. So we have a white building and we have a black building and they're interconnected. And, and it started with that. And, um, and then we, we moved on to talking about doing something iconic on the block and making sure that this building really stood out from all the other buildings that are within that area and, and something that would be recognized and known sure. and remembered. And the panda, obviously, came to mind. It's an iconic animal. Um, the moment I say panda, people think black and white. You're dressed like panda today. Intentionally. Um, I'm not, but you know, <laughs> you definitely are. So it's one of those things where, you know, if I say panda, you automatically think black and white. And sure. we made that connection right away. And from a marketing perspective, it just, it just, spiraled after that so for sure it did yeah so talk to us a bit a little bit about the building yeah give us sort of the, uh, the height the sweet count what to sure. expect and uh, grade give us a sort of a, in a nutshell. so it's a 30-story building um, there's a four-story podium which will have commercial and retail beautiful uh, we can definitely expect to see a nice restaurant on the main floor um, we there's commercial parking. For that, right we do yeah we we spend a lot of time making sure uh, you know there's your front door yeah, but there's also what everybody else expects or experiences along the street, and what we like to see in our building is um, the ground floor spill out into the street and have a connection with the street. Um, there's a number of residential buildings that are just residential building, and when yeah. you walk by, there's nothing really to experience. So for us, uh, you know, I can't think of one building that we haven't done that doesn't have a mixed use. Um, for sure. Uh, application to it. We think it's really, really important. Like the the life at the grade level, um, we put an extremely high importance on that when we're when we're selecting condominiums and and advising our clients. There's a big difference in exactly what you just said. Right. There's a huge difference in terms of the, the way you feel when you approach it and the way the tenant feels when they approach it and when the buyer uh, feels when they approach so, it. We, when we started with uh, Victory Condos, we yep. um, we leased that space to Charles Caboot and Hanif Harji, and they put in. West Lodge and Patria, um, Index, we put in Boxcar Social. Yeah. So the ground floor is very important for us. It's not just the door, but it's also what it does for the street. For sure. So we've got uh, retail and commercial on the first four, four first floors. Four floors. Then it's a 30-story building, um, including the podium. And uh, there's 555 suites, and we have everything from studios to larger three-bedroom units with terraces in some cases. Another area that you know, is, is increasingly important because the buyers are getting very smart, but also the developers are getting very smart, is the floor plans. Um, good use of spaces and, right. you know, no funky shapes. I know, again, I know this is an area that you guys spend a lot of time on. Uh, is there anything you can talk about us on that uh, front? Well, we know that use of space and efficiency of that space is very important. Um, so, you know, in a space like this, yeah. it's not just where a column's going to be, it's how we're going to Put furniture around that, sure. and so we, we don't just look at you know what's the right size for a one bedroom unit or what's the right size for this you know uh, uh, kitchen or a bedroom. 
sure. uh, or how everything interconnects. We also look at how furniture is going to fit in everything, and uh, and we make sure that it's functional. Um, use of space for storage is is always a challenge yeah. in a condo, and uh, but really, I mean, when it comes to space planning, we look at a building as a whole. Right. We know that people are are going to live in in a unit, but that unit is just where they sleep, where sure. they store their stuff. Yeah. Um, where they entertain is really in the amenity space. For sure. So the amenity space becomes a very key component of our development. So talk to us about the amenities. You sure. mentioned you've got the sports. I mentioned the sport cart. We have a, a significant size uh, fitness facility. We also know... We're actually seeing that a, a trend. Sorry to cut you off. Yep. But the, the, the fitness area um, uh, is, you know, oftentimes the most used by some distance, like, you know, uh, in terms of all the amenities. So right. we're seeing a real big focus on making sure that gym is everything it needs to be in. You know, we have the basics. We have the barbecue area so that yeah. you can out, out, entertain outdoor. We have the indoor kitchen so that you can also host a, an event in the lounge. Um, we have the lounge, obviously. But, sure. You know, what, what makes amenity spaces special is that extra something. Sure. And so and That knowing, seems to be what you're very good at. We try hard. Yeah. Uh, well, so, that it shows, right? And, and that's what I'm saying. When you look at the... You've got the track record. And when you've got the track record to show that you've done it in the past, it gives some confidence... We're always trying to find something different. In the case of, of Panda, it's the outdoor sport cart. But in addition to that, we also, knowing that there's a, a huge opportunity to cater to a, a, a student population sure. in this building, we've done a number of rooms that are more of a breakout study room. Nice. Perfect. We did more of an auditorium type theater room with beanbag chairs. Nice. Um, so it's more like a, you know, a presentation space, but it can also be used for you know, late night movies with your friends. So we're, we've really paid attention to that. There's a games room as well with a pool table, a foosball table, and a ping pong table. Perfect. Um, as you know, I, I have a thing for ping pong. So, <laughs> so we wanted to make sure that that was also incorporated yes, into our Perfect. building. Um, is there anything I missed? I didn't ask about Panda that you said, you know what, this is something we should have talked about. Uh, I think you covered off everything, to be honest with you. It's an exciting project. Uh, we Walk don't score. I want to make sure we everybody knows. Walk score is a hundred, a hundred, and I think it's eighty. So a hundred for uh, walking, a hundred for uh, TTC or public transit, and uh, and biking, it's uh, around an eighty score. Perfect. So very, very strong. One of the actually hundred hundred is is not. We don't see that very often. No, so you don't. We see right. ninety eight. We see 90, but hundred hundred is, yeah. is very, very good. Look, we're really excited about Panda. I know there's a lot of excitement in the market. I know you, this is something that you've been working on for many, many years now. Uh, so we're, we're very, very excited to work on it. So um, if our clients are interested in, in purchasing, uh, what, it, what do they need to do? They need to talk to this guy. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Um, we're, we're, it's all about relationships in this world. It is. We don't, we don't really um, go broadly into the market. We, we, relationships, as you mentioned, are very important for us. So. We, we have a core group of people that have been very good to us over the years. Loyalty, you know, just because it's a family business and, sure. and we know how people, um, you know, grow their own businesses. So we support those that support us. Perfect. We didn't, we've done that over the years. Well, we're really excited and we, we, we look forward to bringing you some deals. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Brian.